Welcome, Drifters, to Voidigo, a game that's very similar to Nuclear Throne, Enter the Gungeon, Binding of Isaac, and all those sorts of games. I played a little while, unlocked a few things. One thing is for sure, it's very difficult. Still in early access, can be bought on Steam. This is version 0.5, so almost halfway there until the full release. There's still plenty of content already. As you can see, I've played about 6 hours. And I still haven't even scratched the surface, it seems. This is your character. This is your main hub area where you unlock different stuff. I've un unlocked one, one other character. The main gimmick in the game is you got this jump, which is basically your dodge mechanic that you have in Enter the Gungeon. You can stomp on and jump on top of enemies to stun them. You got your main weapon. You can also melee with each weapon, not only with the melee exclusive weapons. And that's pretty much Ah, you can also sprint around. And that's pretty much the basics covered. Let's get to it. First of all, you pick your character. So each character, afterwards, you pick the power up for your character. Each character has got different unique power ups tailored just to him. So this, the default character has got this one, anti-void combo strike. Whenever you jump on top of an enemy, if you combo this with different jumps to other enemies, and you gain increased power that releases when you drop on the ground. And then you got this other power up, Kindred Contact, which empowers each room you enter has got a beacon that you need to activate, and this gives an aura of empowerment to your character within the range of the beacon. Anyway, I'll get this one. These are all weapons that I've purchased that are unique, the unique starting weapons to this specific character. You can either pick a ranged one or a melee one. This is a quick melee one, shotgun and a slow melee one. I'll just start with the most basic we've got. You can pick a color for the menu for some reason. Get yeah, this. This is the difficulty. The highest difficulty I've got unlocked from the beginning is rock and then you climb up the difficulties upon completing the game. It feels like to me that the highest difficulty currently is the intended difficulty. So I started playing on this one. Sprinting around through some of the objects breaks them and you gather the currency up there which is the currency for the in-game shop. You can always check your current room layout and the overall layout of the level. You can check your power-ups, see more details about those, you can check your weapons, so forth. You can also reroll your weapons. And that's it. And you start. I have in mind this is just like Nuclear Throne. There's a lot of stuff that you need to remember and get used to before you are able to consistently run up. Make it through. I've only made it through the third world at this point. A couple of times. I haven't beaten the game by far. These are the beacons. Each room, most of the rooms have a beacon lying around. You need to approach it, jump on it and you activate the beacon. This clears, this makes the room be considered as cleared. And from that point you can approach the next room without clearing the rest of the enemies. But I will do so to get the uh, extra resources. And I will also clear them because there is uh, another very unique mechanic in the game. 
actually we'll go ahead uh, a drop which I don't think I've ever gotten a drop from an enemy before that's weird I guess there's a small chance we got the Imperial Maze which allows you to do these combos with the melee weapon and with the right click you can use the shield the shield blocks and reflects projectiles back while if you swing at a projectile it destroys it rather than ammo all the melee weapons have durability which is used with either attacking or when you block a bullet an important differentiation between Gungeon and Nuclear Throne is that enemies by default doesn't don't have they don't damage you upon touching them so you can more safely say use the weapons what's that another drop the roster yeah I'm like I know this one basically lights enemies up on fire next thing is unlocking those beacons as you can see here I've, I've done one out of three so across all the rooms on the level there will be three in total when you unlock a certain when you reach a certain threshold you've unlocked say two out of three the boss will boss appears and not only until you've unlocked all of them in all the rooms you are able to defeat the boss and the boss continues to chase around in different rooms as well so in next room I'm going to demonstrate the jump mechanic which is your dodge you can dodge over projectiles you can't dodge over walls which is kind of weird are there any enemies there are no enemies around here oh this is the shop room so in this room you can enter the shop very similar to the Gungeon shop you can buy weapons and upgrade the weapons so the green items or weapons are the uncommon rarity of items the regular then you got the uncommon the blue ones then you got purple orange the normal tiered gears so the power-ups where you can see this these plus signs are power-ups and the weapons represent another gear you can pick up the power-ups cost all 20 while the weapons cost just 10 so the power-ups are more important to your run overall currently I'm only able to buy a weapon but I already have two and by having two means you have to drop one of those anyway I'll continue I'll continue with the maze this time are there enemies? ah there's an enemy there oh, oh, you can jump on top of them, stun them for a while before you kill them oh, this room is cracked full of stuff so first of all this is the crystal and now that the beacon is broken now the boss is still not here there's a shell you can enter or this altar here presents the option to trade my the roster weapon for faster sprint speed power up generally you should try to acquire as many power ups as you can and now trade this weapon get the sprint power up now I'll go back to the previous room and acquire my default gun again ha, ha. this is where the gun is pick it up when I'm in close proximity to an activated beacon you can see that effect around the character which amplifies the rate of fire and this effect occurs only because of this kindred contract 
uh, power up the default one I picked before entering the stage. So already pre-entering the stage, you can already have some sort of sense where you would want the run to go and the syn the possible synergies you might want to look for. Of course, to know all those, you, ha you must have played the game for a while. There's no list or anything like that where you can see possible synergies. I'm not sure if there are any, actually. This is the the first boss. There are many, sh should I say, rather, several different bosses in each level that you can get. I'll try to clear out the enemies first. This guy is blocking the projectiles. Stop on Stump on top of him to disable him for a while. Now, as you can see, I haven't got any ammo left in my gun. When that uh, happens, you approach an enemy and melee it. And then it should, it should drop some ammo. Or maybe I need both of my weapons to be out. The boss is pretty basic. I think this one is the easiest one we can get. This pickup, this little trap ghost pickup is a health pickup. You can see. See, I didn't defeat the boss, but it is. I'm in this room currently and it fled to this room. Now in order to continue beating the boss, currently he's invulnerable, so if I go to him I won't be able to beat him. I need to find all the beacons, activate all the beacons and then I can finally defeat the boss. And once you defeat him, in this state it unlocks his true void form, where, it, where it, he is fighting at its highest potential, should I say. And then you finish the level. Did I mention this is a very difficult game and requires a lot of concentration? I find the most similarities to Nuclear Throne as opposed to other games. Cold Oid Junker. That slows him down. See how it shows his, you can no longer defeat him. Because he just found me in this room. Now I can do is flee or find the next beacon. And before activating that beacon here, I'll make sure to defeat all the enemies around. So they're not in the way. Now I'll activate it. And I can fight the boss till the end. But he's already fled to another room. So sometimes he flees, sometimes he's chasing you. You have to go around the different rooms. There he is. Let's finish it. And this is what happens when you block. with the shield. It uses durability but reflects projectiles. In comparison to Nuclear Throne the melee weapons feel kind of underwhelming in the sense that they are so much slower most of them and not really unresponsive it's just a different way have to think about how you approach situations when you got a melee weapon. Also it seems like all melee weapons have a shield option. But luckily for this preview run I got the easiest the easiest first boss. So that's that.
like expected, you get loot from it. You can pick faster reload, faster bullets and longer range. Shoplifter help. Now, the color represents the rarity. Now this pink one is an epic rarity, so in essence that should be the best one, but I'm not sure what that actually does. Shoplifter help. Let's see. After losing his job at the local postal office, this side support fell into crime. After stealing enough for a comfortable pension, he now helps other unemployed people such as you. <laughs> Do not worry, he is very discreet and he will meet back up outside after a successful heist. Uh, so that means just like in Gunjan, I'm able to steal. I'm able to steal from the shop. Oh, I forgot. I forgot this shell. Upon entering that one, you are presented with an optional extra level. If you go to this blank door, you just get the next extra level, uh, extra room. And upon completing the room, you get a reward. If you pick one of those challenge doors, you will get an extra reward that's displayed on top. But taking into account your own build and knowing what each challenge actually means is key to succeeding this. So first one, accept walls of lava challenge. Basically means you can't touch any wall. And so far I haven't been able to complete this one. And this one would give us an extra gun. This one would give us extra 20 currency. I've already got two guns, so I'm not that concerned about this one. I'll throw this one. Except Voidling Challenge, which means during this uh, room, a lot of these Voidling enemies spawn in, which are very tough buddies, like kind of the police, the super elite police that comes later on in Nuclear Throne. Anyway, I'll try this one, see how it goes. Before those appear, try to take out as many enemies as you can. There's the first one. Not sure if I can stun those. Or maybe. It's lucky that this ice these ice projectors are helping me dodge more easily. Now this is a melee one. Dead. Oh, we got more. I thought this was the end. I was just about to say, ah, how easy that was. Honestly, those void enemies are extremely dangerous if you let them pile up. We got, we got all this money. Always make sure to go around and collect any leftover resources. So this is the basic reward you get for clearing that room. Increased melee durability. Beacons fire lasers. Whenever you activate a beacon, ever so often it will fire a laser and bullet ring on reload. Having a melee weapon means no reload, so that doesn't help at all. We got this one. An interesting mechanic is that all power-ups, they got levels and up during the run, you're able to upgrade those. And, uh, and usually it upgrades their stats, but sometimes it got some more unique upgrades. Anyway, I think I'll just get the the fire lasers will synergize well with the kindred contract, I think. So I've got this one. Got an extra thing here. You can recycle your weapons. Usually you get more ammo for recycling your weapon. But sometimes you get other weapons. Don't think it's necessary currently. From here on, 
the only thing left on this floor. Oh, I could actually go back, get that starter gun. I'll go in and recycle the starter gun and maybe you'll get some sweet rewards. Even if not... Oh, no you can't. Because the dog is gone. <laughs> I thought I'm so clever. Yeah. Like the criminal eye spot says. He now helps other unemployed people such as you. <laughs> you low life. Anyway. So that's what that, <laughs> that does. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking of hitting you. So he did, did, he did something when I shot that projectile. So I guess there is something hidden when you attack the shop like just like in Gunjan. Exploding frog bullets for 25. Grenade on reload, so attack on reload during the battle. Weapon, weapon, combo stomp souls. I think the souls are actually the little goals you get to replenish your health. So for 51, I'll get this one. The frog bullets, 26. I'm only able to get one more. Reload, reload. Yes, I'll just take the combo stomp souls. So that means. I don't know what that means. We'll just have to see. Gimme, give gimme give this. Rat infested loot. He stoned that one. How often is he able to do this? One, I reckon once per floor. That's extremely cool. The rat infested loot allows you to spawn in rats basically whenever you destroy those crates that are uh, sitting around. First world Antlantis. Finished. In between each world, you get this sort of a hub area called the anti void or anti void, where you can trade other things to gain some benefits. For example, I can train my melee weapon for an upgrade bundle or sacrifice power up for max health. Basically, I'm sacrificing the thief for another health bar, but I'm not sacrificing the thief ever. Seems so good. What's that one for like? Sacrifice max health for two ma random power ups. Why not? Sounds nice. Let's see what these are like. More companion health. Non currently. It was this one. Beacon Emerald Don't Turret. Beacon Power Turret. That means whenever the beacon is online, I will get the laser from it. We we'll also get the kindred contract and a turret. So that pretty much seems like it solidifies what direction this build is supposed to go in. I guess taking this artifact in the beginning already did that. So anyway, I'm trading this weapon. I'm only left with this one now. You see what happens. It presents us with a choice. I can upgrade the speedy feet, which were faster sprint speed so 20% faster I can upgrade the beacons to fire two more lasers or 100% more souls hmm. I think the sa the lasers sound amazing and you can upgrade this one six times interesting So sacrificing the health wasn't really worth it. Oh, actually the turret. We got the turret. 
So it was worth it. That final form of the metamorphosis. What was that? A little dung beetle. I can jump on top. For no reason. Alright. So having oh, so many power ups tailored to the beacon means finding the beacon in each room is the highest priority. You saw all the rats that spawned from the crates. Did you see the last rat had frog legs? That is because the exploding frog bullets allow you give you a chance to, to fire a frog bullet. Uh, basically a bullet that jumps around. But it seems like that synergizes with the rats. So each rat can also be one of those. And luckily enough, the, this is where the shop is, just in front. And I get... He'll steal something else again. Hello. What's that? Oh, what is this? Beacon Emerald on turret. Ah, you can... Ah, this is an upgrade to the turret already. This is common. And then this becomes uncommon. Ah, one more laser. 20% higher fire rate and longer range. Mm. Spooked to shoot faster. Increased accuracy inside slight homing. Electricity bullets. Health buffed pulse. Mm. As you progress down the floors, naturally the prices at the shop increase. There's something of interest here. What's that about? Uh. Seven stable beacons for 40 shards. Mm, don't think so. What did he steal anyway? A tennis racket. Oh, that's not. That's a ranged weapon. Oh. Hmm. Right, let's. So the tennis are both uncommon. First come, first served on the rocks, coming right up. Now the difficulty spikes quite substantially from now on. Ah, I thought this was a, the beacon was supposed to. That wasn't really a beacon, was it? What's that? So max health for 80 shards. 80 shards, though. Does that mean I'm basically one shot it currently? Now let's buy all the stuff. First of all, upgrade the turret. I'll buy the spook to shoot fast. 50% more max health. Ah, we don't have companions. Increased accuracy. Yeah. And spoke to shoot faster. <laughs> you can. <laughs> I can buy something else, maybe. 25, 25. A gun for 10. Shot, shot gun. Or mining laser. So stick to these ones for now. We've been here already. What are those things? Ah, they explode. There's the laser. Lasers are the green lasers come from the upgraded turret, which is supposed to be one. And those purple lasers are fired by that artifact. Because they were upgraded, there are two now. So upgrading the, the power-ups 
It's not just pure stats upgrade. They're more interesting. There's two things here. Oh, those. Ah, those. Like shamans. Those are very dangerous. You have to keep your distance to them. So, Porco shit, Porco land. Oh. Wood vortex. Bone bow. What's that like? Oh no. But uh, common, uncommon. This was uncommon as well. So I guess it's better, but no ammo for it. Hmm. What's this one? Is this a challenge? Yeah, this is a challenge room. Accept to not get hit challenge. And I get a free upgrade. Formless challenge. This is a win stop. Whenever you stomp on top of an enemy, it does something else. And do not dodge challenge. This uh, dude, whenever you get him, he refreshes all your health and ammo. So I guess do not, do not get hit challenge. This was the best because we're already being one shot yet. Alright. Careful. Oh, you can't. You can't use the beacons in these rooms. Get it. I'll go to the camp now. We've got def defeating each boss gives you this currency, whatever that is, void sales or something, and you can use to unlock more stuff or upgrade your pet here. Or not sure if the pet does anything. The Tower of Problems. So this little hut, this is the hut for that first guy, the default character where you unlock your starting weapons. This second character, this is his house, where you unlock his stuff. Uh, what else is there? The tutorial. And this. 10, 10. You can still... Ah, you can't use them. And Alright, let's try another run. I'll do the same character, Drash. The anti-void combo basically means that any power-up that upgrades your stomp ability in any sense further solidifies this direction of the build. And I would think this is a melee friendly build. So I'll just skip it because I think uh, meleeing enemies around this much more difficult than it seems <laughs> at least for me that was so reckless of me to end the run like that I think that was very lucky run oh this thing ah uh, yes you feed this thing crystals and there's a random chance that it craps all cracks open and gives you power-ups for each time you feed it it gives you another one but it's uncertain you can f open in the second like feeding it 10 times to just 10 but it might require 30 or however much is the max so it's best to use those right at the end of the level when you got the most This is a random quest you can get from her, like granny or mommy. Accept soul baby fetch quest. 
you have to fill all those car, uh, baby cards or whatever they're called with souls. Souls are basically the things that fill your health bar up. That you fill the health bar. So the next five times I pick something that uh, health refreshing, the health refreshing item, you will just go in here instead. So that means you have to be more careful. What is this? Remote attacker drone. Mm -hmm. 30. That looks exactly like the drone the other character has. What was that? Spirit assist on kill. That means perfect. These spirits are the, the things we need for the quest or to replenish health. What else have we got here? Hurt yourself for 5 shards. No. Just 5. Come on. Sell max health for 60. That sounds much more reasonable, I think. Now I'll get the spirit bombard. That means I can complete the quest easier. Bat slippers. Banana split. Combo stomps bats. Aggressor banana split. Oh, I should get this bat. Gym bot. What the bot does is. The bot holds your weapon for you. And, sh and you can also use it to melee and shoot from distance. So this is the actually what the other character has as, as a default, that bot. Let's see how that plays. It's a bit off-putting, but... Oh, I've been here. It's that place. A lot of stuff going on on the screen. Remember that the bot actually shoots my stuff. The shotgun is pretty powerful, actually. That allows allows you to keep like melee range to use the shotgun. Another thing you have to keep in your mind is those crystals that fall around on the ground. They lose their value over time so you should try at least attempt to pick them up as early as, as quickly as possible a lot of money in this level let's enter the challenge room prophecy laser challenge and i get a gun do not sprint challenge and i get oh the the beacons fire laser this is the thing we're looking for do not sprint right got it no sprint should be easy get some ammo that bot is actually amazing for this weapon Ah, too easy. What else is there? Ah, that. Stompable electricity buttons appear. Stompable fire buttons appear. Laser on block. Let's just get the laser on block. Maybe. I haven't got a melee weapon, but. Oh, I can buy a soul even. To fill one of the cards. Yeah, this is the soul that you use to replenish health. Look at that baby. I think increasing the contrast between the overall background or maybe lowering the contrast on some, on some things to make the readability of enemies and like actions in general just slightly better. Is something to be considered. I think Nuclear Throne had something similar going on uh, at the beginning. 
before they dumped everything down. I'm actually just one hit away of failing the run again. And I should keep remembering to get the beacon ready quicker. Another boss. It's a more difficult one than that uh, worm snail thing. For sure. Targeting the bot, I don't. I think the bot is invulnerable to to attacks. Another soul. So it's all because of this power up. Spirit assist on kill. Whenever you kill something, there's a chance for health to appear. So now that the boss has retreated in this room, we we'll have to face him again. But I won't be able to kill him until I open more beacons. So you just have to try and rush through the room as quickly as you can. So now that the room has started, we we'll have to find the beacon, trigger it again maybe, then leave. Or you can just leave. But you can sprint. Oh no, I can't. There is something I need to trigger before. That's where that is. Yeah, and now I'm able to leave. And he can chase me through the rooms. It depends how you define chasing. Is it? What was that? Stompable bomb buttons, bullet wall bounce. Mm. Compost stone pads. Banana split. Aggressor. I think the aggressor was a melee weapon which might prove useful. So if I get the quest completed, it will replenish all my health. Only two ammo left. Maybe I should have bought. Oh, get out. And there's enemies as well. Hmm. Oh, there's ammo. Ah, the ammo. Another ammo. Can I attack? Oh, I can attack the boss. No. As good as that bot was, it was off putting me a little. Okay, one last attempt. This is the the attempt. I mean I don't I don't suppose I'll beat the game but who knows? Right. Oh that that makes me wanna go back and play with the throne again. Always one of my favorite games. And that being said, I don't think I've unlocked everything there is to unlock in Nuclear Town. I think there were a few things that were still waiting. What was that? Forku machine gun. 
That seems pretty reasonable. It's actually the only normal gun I've seen so far. They're all <laughs> like really lucky. Sacrifice max health. Mm. I don't think sacrificing max health is a good strategy for noobs. Oh yeah, you can also dodge by jumping. Jump, stun, attack. And where is that? The beacon. What's this? Bish. Huh? Pop, pop. What the fuck is this crap? I'm certain it's probably synergizes very well with some homing abilities. Or it might be good for bosses actually. Let's see how that one. Oh, it's this crap. I think this is the hardest starting boss for me. Oh, this deal significant damage. What about the other gun? Safer. It's interesting how there's no beacon in this level to help me out. So that's that. This is locked. Let's go down here. Atlantis. Increased max ammo. Accept fire death challenge or max increase max health accept do not dodge challenge. I think this is this is the one. I'm not dodging much anyway, so is that it? Increased accuracy and slight homing. That's good for this weapon. Faster bullets and longer reach. That's also good for this weapon. This is uncommon, so I'll get this one. Next. Now that I, the next question is: Now that I have this one, should I? And where is my default gun? Is that here? I'll just sacrifice this machine gun. See what we get. Oh, just ammo. Now that I get the max health, I should probably use it to gain more money for the shop or just keep it for extra to be extra safe so where's my gun anyway uh. oh the bee shooter the bee shooter so these are supposed to travel further Oh, they do travel considerably for much further. Do we need anything from that shop then? What's going on here? Nothing. Interesting. It's like sell max health for 40. Wasn't there a 60 shards option? 
Brilliant friend. Faster rear world. Chance of dropping coffee. Uh, so attack on rear world. I don't need anything still, do I? <coughs> pop, pop, pop. Oh, I can't believe this game is actually still. Uh, did that actually take half my build? I can't believe the game is still in like early access is still like halfway of the plant release quarter. I'm excited, not gonna lie, if this if this can super like ex if this can exceed nuclear throne and that's a game out for years to come to play. What was that? Beacon activation. Oh. HP so. Whoa. When you activate the. See how it's fleeing. Not sure what drop down one. Ultra rare. Beacons, thank you. Every time you activate a beacon, you're going to get healed or something. Oh. I wonder what triggered. Had to drop. Yeah, I won't go to the boss, I'll let him, her, rather, come to me. And I'll continue exploring the rooms. More healing. So if I open this. Nothing. Gotcha. There's really nothing here. Right. Where was the sacrifice max skill option? It's in the next room. You can destroy the environment like these walls with some weapons. Be shotter. Do I need a lot of things from the shop? Yeah, I will get that. This is a better one than the one in the shop. This gives for 60. Alright, let's finish. Let's finish him. Uh, oh, come on, it takes so much. Oh, gosh. Ah! What the? Let's let me see how long this video is. Fifty three minutes. <laughs>